Something you can say to your therapist and while doing reverse cowgirl. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey girl, you trying to hit this? Oh, you know exactly what I need. No, this is awesome that you guys have it all set up and you like edit it and everything yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Impressive. It's (laughs) we're tired. (laughs) (laughs) So I mean it's doing well. Someone take me away from all this. We're barely making it through. So how did you find us? I don't know. I think it was just Instagram. I think, you know, like Like those Instagram things pop up and you're just like scrolling through mm-hmm. your explore page and normally for me it's like weird fitness things because I'll like do like fitness uh spoofs or whatever all and so I get a bunch of fitness stuff and then you guys popped up and I was like oh those girls are cool and then oh, hell yeah yeah and then I was you watched- reached out to us and asked yeah. to be on which is awesome well, yeah we love that today guys what's up you filthy fucking stoners it's your co-host Jamie Lee and I'm Emily today we have on comedian Sarah Huntington online personality content creator Thank you for coming on. Yeah, no, I'm I was to be here. stalking you today, and I was like watching all your reels, and I was like, "All right, she's very on brand yeah. with us." That's when I was like watching you guys. I was like, "Okay, these girls are cool." I yeah, I love girls. that. Yeah, I, you make a lot of content. Oh, what did I read? I read like an article about you, and uh, it was talking about like how you grew up. Fuck! Now I'm not remembering. Like white trash. White trash. Yeah. You're you like, know, what is that word? Yeah, you, we have hints of white <laughs> like, trash I don't think in you're here. Supposed to say it. No, but no. Like, but I'm like, yeah. I was like, what's the topic again? We smoked before this. I don't know. My dad lives in a trailer, so who, who am I to judge? Yeah. Well, I've gotten banned twice now from Instagram for saying white trash. So you're apparently that's like a hate crime. You're not allowed to say that. I didn't that's really? racist. I was like, yeah. I was like, it's. I'm talking about my own family, but. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Got banned twice. I'm like shadow banned right now because somebody else posted a video of me saying it. And they tagged you and so it hurt you? Next Manikoff on and I shared um, a story of him from like our podcast and it was like come see or share something from the Miami Improv I was like go see Max Manikoff and catch him this Tuesday on two girls one blonde I just tagged our podcast and uh but I put like a little leaf emoji and a smoke emoji next to our name and the link to the Miami Improv ticket links to just like help promote him yeah and it got removed for like selling of and distribution of a regulated goods but I was like now the Miami improv is known as a as a weed shop is it that no (laughs) (laughs) but and then I did like something else it was because one time we did this 420 event and I shared it and my page itself just yeah that's the thing now so I don't like post anything weed related now on my page yeah once they tag you on something it's like they're watching it's game you over constantly how'd over. you get your page back i don't have it back right now oh. right now they're still pretty mad at me like my content is only being shown to like the people that are following me but you actually have the account like you can log in and use it right oh yeah but okay. like if you were to search my name right now on instagram it wouldn't pop up they yeah have you have to type like, in the oh, full yeah, thing yeah, right there. yeah we've yeah. had like an account warning on tiktok forever oh so, yeah i've probably got like 14 more days before i'm back in action which... how does tiktok like you tiktok goes back and forth too like i'll have one that like pops off and then they're like okay she's cool and then i'll get like a little too risky because i'm always like taking chances on tiktok and then they're like no bitch like we said you can't say that stuff yeah and then i'm back to like down at the bottom so tiktok is just like a toxic relationship to me it just, it's so oh, toxic i love but it, it so like much year oh, yeah. off oh really now i just scroll and watch tarot readings but that's all i get on my own it's feed. so <laughs> annoying and i'm like delusional you know no uh, i've yeah. been begging my phone for a tiktok reading asking how this guy feels about me and they won't send me any tarot <laughs> yeah, she's readings like, you how, expect it. like what are his intentions and they won't fucking tell me yeah that's what cheaper than therapy yeah, right and, and honestly like, though me. some of them when they're like the channeled readings it's just like life advice it's like you know like you're very powerful and you need to love yourself and believe in yourself and i'm like listening to it and i'm like you're right oh, I'm, 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 like, she's talking and I'm right like people me. just want my energy <laughs> like whatever <laughs> Speaking of energy, we were saging the house today and then I come out and my entire sweatshirt is on fire 
We it almost burned the place down before you came. Yeah, yeah, I have that energy. Her hoodie landed in a candle and it went up in flames immediately. Can you imagine if you guys had to call me? You're like, yeah, we're going to have to cancel. Um, our house is on fire. So <laughs> That's, I was like, let's just, you know, hopefully it doesn't smell like smoke too bad in here. No, it smells great in here. It's also so. so Yeah. And I just started doing that. I was like a very, I smoked in like high school, was really into it then. And then something happened to me. I must've gotten like a wrong strand or something in college. Then I had this weird, like anti weed thing. And then, um, like six months ago, I've tried to like, I don't, I haven't quit drinking. I'm not a psychopath, but like, (laughs) it's so hard. (laughs) I've tried to start drinking less, but now like I can't sleep at night. So now I'm an indica person at night. And okay. my friend got me this very specific one. And I was like still pretty against it. This was like literally three months ago. I was still pretty against it. You just it. started smoking like three months ago. Like oh, a, shit. Yeah. Since college? Yeah. So how long has it been? Like six years. Oh, wow. Yeah. How old are you? 30. 30? Oh, yeah. I'm about to turn 30. Ooh. It, things change. Like you. her everything i'm like just wait stuff starts getting weird <laughs> you can't sleep at night everything hurts like we yeah. tried to go to the gym the other day i pulled like something in my leg i was bruised from like labia to knee i'm like this is what happens dude like i yeah i'm awful. getting hurt for no reason yeah i will say and oh, we've God. talked about this before on the podcast i feel like as i got older something my mom always told me weird but she'd be like you, you don't know you don't have sex right now like you don't even know what sex is when we were in like high school and college she's like wait till you're older and now I'm like getting older and I'm like oh shit she was right because the sex does get way better as you're older mine has gotten non-existent but like are you celibate I I wish I wish that was I wish it was like on purpose like I wish I was like yeah I'm just practicing celibacy but you're going through a dry spell yeah it's just just no one's worthy yeah that's the thing like I don't know what happened in the past like year but I was like I'm gonna quit drinking I'm gonna quit getting in toxic relationships and when you're not drunk or seeking toxic relationships like the options just kind of go away. The prospects are low. Yeah. There's nothing out there. Yeah, like, yeah. where are the emotionally intelligent men? Yeah, where do you find them? And then I find them and then they have bad breath. Yeah. Oh. Or they do you know like, what I mean? Yeah, just have like nothing to talk about. Yeah, like there's something else that's like missing that I'm like, God damn it. Or they're just talking about like really normal, healthy things. And I'm like, no, tell me about how your dad didn't love you. Like, I, it's just yeah. like, oh no, I want to get deep with it. Yeah. Like, I can't. Tell me you have to go to the hospital because you're having an anxiety attack. Like, that's like, that's so hard. Yeah. Well, so I need somebody that like is stable, but also doesn't judge my craziness or like me being all over the place. Cause I have like, I'm just bop, bop, bop doing things all the time up and down. Yeah. And I want them to just be like, Oh, I love you for that. And I accept you and I'm not judging. And there isn't a disconnect because they came from like a good family. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I I don't know though. Cause I feel like those like kind of like good boys that like came from a good family, like you, for instance, I feel like they're drawn to girls like you. Like when I had my hair pink, I thought that I would draw like this kind of like mysterious like drummer or something like no. a bad boy like a man named Dre or like or like yeah like Dad yeah Blair or something. like really like yeah interesting and unique the when I had pink hair I always drew in like accountants and what? like guys I would never expect I think they just see you and they're like what is that it's because they're so vanilla like in their mm-hmm. work they're like oh I gotta have some fun at home I want somebody who's a little crazy yeah yeah I think I think people look at me like, oh, she'll be a fun time. Yeah. Like I haven't, she's an experience. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm more than an experience. All right. <laughs> I, I have a heart and emotions. And okay? they're like, I want to go to six And then flags. they're like expecting crazy <laughs> sex. And I'm like, by the way, I'm a pillow princess. Yeah, what's up? Right. <laughs> so what's your type? Who do you go for? Uh, normally like the weak men, like physically and mentally weak. You know what I mean? Like skinny and sad type. Oh. Like, drummer like in a band a DJ. looks like he's gonna die soon yeah like pete davidson like Tim, only pete what about like- oh, what's the lo- what's the lowest height you'll do or is it not See, matter i don't really like think I care as much. They have to be taller than me, but I'm five four. So I mean, like, I was just gonna say so five small. Yeah, hard. But 
No, like I want them a little bit taller and skinnier and just like look like they're going to like trauma dump on me. Now, I have changed a little bit. I'm trying to get out of that because it's, hard. it's been terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it representing about you? That I like that type yeah. of man? Uh, probably that I like to be in control and like feel Interesting. like I like have control over the situation. I like to be like the dominant one, the masculine one. Oh. And I think that was like a control thing for me forever. Where do you think that stems from? God. Oh my God. I didn't know you guys were. Oh yeah. We get so deep. We get so deep here. Oh my God. (laughs) Probably like not being in control is like a like child teenager, like, uh, always the guys that I went for when I was like really younger, like were probably more like my dad where they were just kind of like, like macho man, like Republicans. Uh And then I was like, I want to gain control over like anybody that I date. Like I want to be able to get your heart broken. I don't remember a specific moment where I got my heart broken, but I do remember in like high school, I was like, just kind of like free and definitely like kind of promiscuous at a young age. And then Mm -hmm. it just like really downfalled for me. And then I met this one guy and he was so innocent, like valedictorian of his class, like little teeny tiny, beautiful man. (laughs) He's so small and little and cute. Oh my God. I just like controlled everything he did. And then I loved that. And then I just held on to that. And I was like, I need that because that's like how I feel safe as long as I have control over the situation. Yeah, but what no, if I get I, that? It's because we haven't found men, though, that can take control that we can trust. Yes. So now after therapy, I'm <laughs> <laughs> trying to find somebody that I don't have to take care of, but can like match me. And I'm not like the dominant one, like somebody that I can like kind of have a a back and forth with. I like that. My favorite like thing. Control. My favorite thing about a man. And then they're like grabbing the bags and they packed the car and they're like, oh, I got you a coffee because I know you've been running around getting ready. Like, where do you guys? Because I don't have I've that. I found experience. some men like that. It's just hard. No, mine is they like cheated every on me guy still, like, but it was nice. Yeah, they always cheat. My, every guy I've dated when we go on a trip, they're like, I just go with the flow, and I'm like, mm, no, no, you don't. I did everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's true the flow that i created yeah exactly like you the thought flow. it was just magic and you packed one t-shirt and two pair of underwear like this isn't the same thing as, yeah like i want that i want brain off type of man okay do you want to meet a man organically or do you want one from an app organically who wants I, one from an app yeah do you, i don't know i kind of like the idea of amazon ordering a man like I'd be down for that do i get to choose the size in all areas you do oh i because mean you found your And this dude was like, can you please shove corn up my ass? I'm begging somebody to shove corn up my ass. And did you respond? This was, you know, I did. (laughs) (laughs) This was six years ago. I unfortunately did not shove corn up his ass. It was out of season. It was watermelon. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my God. In Indiana, I could have brought you so much corn. That's so true. Where are are you you based out of now? I am still in Indiana. I moved to New York in March, so I have... A little bit of time there, but I'm just traveling for now. So you're living in New York right now? I'm living in Indiana right now. So did you start comedy in Indiana? I did. How was that? It's actually, I'm like really happy that I did it because I I didn't start as a content creator, anything online. I started in stand-up comedy. Which everyone has a misconception about anyone who has a social media. Yes. Then they're like, I'm just hearing about you now. And it's like, I've been doing this. Yes. I feel like so many people are like... Mm, she just like got her start from TikTok or whatever. But I'm like, no, I've been doing stand up for four years, like actually practicing it. And I think Indiana is like a decent place to get started because you don't have that like competition. Like I've turned into like a big fish, small pond. That's why we like it in Miami. Yeah. Everyone's like, why Miami? And I'm like, because we're building like an empire here. Yeah. Once it's going to be way easier to build this here than in New York or Austin or LA where everyone's like doing it. Mm -hmm. And then we can move once that's like established. That's exactly. That's, I feel like I've probably, I don't even think I've stayed there too long. I think I've stayed there just the right amount of time where it's like, okay, I'm ready. Like, and I'm going to go there. I'm going to go to New York. I'm going to turn into like small fish again, which is fine. Yeah. But 
now I've met like the right people and like gotten a lot of things in order that when I moved there, I just kind of like, I don't have to do all the like shitty, like yeah. open mics, all that kind of stuff. Like I've met enough people in the comedy scene where it's like, I get to go there and just kind of like measle my way into like, you'll be some, able to get booked at nice. places. Yeah. Instead yeah. of like, I find it way ugh. easier to get booked coming from like another place. Like I just DM people. I'm like, Hey, I'm traveling. Can I get a yeah. spot? Yeah. yeah. Whereas Especially, like when I lived in Boston, it was harder to get stage time if you lived in this, like in that place. That definitely happens in Indianapolis too. Like when I like do shows in Indianapolis, like no one shows up. And then when I like go out of state, it's like uh, people show up cause they're like, I'm like, I guess more of like a novelty where in Indianapolis, they're like, we saw you drunk on a bar two weeks ago. Like, yeah, that's true. It's like you're not a novelty in your own hometown. Like, no, <laughs> unless we, you move away from your hometown and then, and then come, come back, back. which yeah. we did that. We just did laugh Boston and it was great. Like a bunch of people showed up and we had like podcast fans and it was a different Boston than when, like yeah. from when we left, I, love I was like, Oh, Boston. okay. Now I don't mind Boston comedy as much. <laughs> yeah. But laugh Boston is a great place too. We did. I actually fun. love Boston. I had never been there until we had a show there. And I like, I like Boston people. I did, feel like you would like you, a Boston man. Oh yeah. yeah. I, what? Like an Italian man, like, oh, an Italian like man, kind of angry a little bit all or like time. an Irish so man hard. who has a little bit of a drinking problem, but mm-hmm. is like a good man. He's blue collar. Yeah. He's We're a team good blue man. collar man here. We love a blue collar man. What are the men like in Miami? Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> or they're like so hot, but you just like know they're messaging everyone. Mm. You know what I mean? No one wears condoms. So, yeah, like you'll just everyone cheats here. I I don't even think I've been on a single date here. Every time I hook up with anybody, it's from uh, they're from out of state. Oh, really? Like people visiting the bars and then just like. Yeah. Like any someone who's out of visit, like out of state, like that I've been talking to maybe from online and then they travel to Miami. So we hook up in Miami, but they're not from Miami. So I have all these like weird long distance, like. Are they normally from like around the same place? Like, are you a Midwest, Boston? Um, West side. West side I story. love, I love a Northeast boy. Okay. I love the Northeast. I love the attitude. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> I remember I was like giving some dude attitude and he, I forget what he said. He's like, shut your mouth. <laughs> he was like, he like just de- like said something. He's like, good morning, you piece of shit. And I was like, oh my, oh my God, God, I love you. I'm so sorry, I'm wet. <laughs> right? He like just texted me, good morning, you piece of shit. And I was like, wow, we're like really connecting here. Yeah. Like no, there's I chemistry. Like, like I like when like they're like, you're kind of being a bitch right now. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Put me in my place. Love. <laughs> but you like weaker men, but you like being put in your place. I think that's like what I'm attracted to, but what I've always dated is like the weaker ones. Cause I'm like, I'm always like attracted to that guy that kind of puts me in my place. And I'm like, but I can't date him. Like I can't Cause that's them. dangerous. Like you'll yeah. fall for him. Yes. Actually and fall. And I'll get hurt. Yes. Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> see, I feel like I go after insecure men who like see me and like, I like resemble something that they like, they want, you know what I mean? They want that freedom. I mean, I would love to like date somebody that we could like work together on something, you know, like build a life together. Like my parents were more work partners than they were like life partners. Okay. And so I think I saw that as like, that's what a relationship is. You like Mm. build an empire together and then you get divorced in your (laughs) fifties. Like that's, 
that's a relationship to me. So like if I could find somebody that we could like build a little empire together and then of course get divorced. That's like my, that's my dream. And then you have like your fun at the end at, yeah. in your fifties. Yeah. yeah. And then I get to like, you know, go down to Florida and retire there and you know, I think I just okay. need to find an old man. An old man? Like a silver fox. He's been through the game. He's like, I don't need this. He's tired. I've been through it enough. I know. You know what I mean? I can handle you. Yeah. I'm emotionally stable. You get to go out. He's like, I'll just be here. He's mowing figured the grass his life or... out. So he's at a point where he's like, makes money and he's comfortable and confident. And he's yeah. not insecure. You know what? That's so true. We just did a comedy show the other night in Miami. going crazy she was drunk she was heckling she threw a drink at a comedian yeah. and he was like yeah that's my girl i love her so much she's just a little crazy yeah. and then he like grabbed her made her apologize to the comedian got her another drink and was like she'll be fine that's perfect i love that like that's i like daddy. that yeah that that's, daddy. That, that's daddy for sure not even zaddy that's daddy like <laughs> capital d yeah <laughs> I um, was watching one of your TikTok videos and you were like going over a list of first dates, like the restaurants. Oh, yeah. And I heard you say bowling is a great first date. That's my first date of choice. Is it? Yes. What's yours? I love bowling because I think it's like it's friendly enough competition. Like we're not going to play like softball where one of us is going to get hurt or something. Yeah. But like bowling is like friendly enough where like if I'm winning, I'm like, suck my dick, Derek. Like, <laughs> yeah. Mm. And there's so much tension and flirting that happens. Yes. You get to walk away so he gets to see your ass. to do that little thing like yep yeah and then every once in a while you'll meet at the thing and you get to do like a little like that's when you can like hug for the first time oh like do make a little secret handshake you know yeah I suck at bowling but I like it because then I get to do like the the hero theory where I make him feel bigger than he actually oh, is yeah, and, and I'm like oh like can you help me it. please <laughs> oh know? men love to feel important like the that. little damsel in distress act that's working on your femininity like knowing you can do it but then just being like, can, can you teach me? Yeah, I maybe. struggled with that for a long time. I was like, no, I know how to do it. And I can do it better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how many 300s do you have? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> My mom was single mom. <laughs> I was bred for this. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I think bowling's a good first date. I think anything that gives like a little bit of a friendly banter. Uh, their inner child and I feel like that makes me fall in love with you so cute oh, she's I like always... I just want them to feel like their inner child's happy with me so mm -hmm. that I can be with them forever I Is that always kiss my <laughs> pants at trampoline park so that would be like so, and like honestly a good first date because if they're cool with it I'm like okay you're oh cool. then you're one to keep like yeah. you know if a guy's like weird about stuff like that I'm like Ugh. yeah like I the last guy I had sex with I was like his dick was huge. So he was like hitting my cervix <laughs> and I was like bleeding a little. He never ate my pussy for the rest of the trip. I've definitely done a power thing where like grab their head. I'm like, listen, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy made you dinner. <laughs> you know? How was that fettuccine? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh. Are you Dom or Sub? She's definitely a Dom. Yeah. So you're Dom in real life and in bed. I'm like the opposite. Doesn't it get exhausting? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please, someone save me. I'm tired. <laughs> Would you be Sub for the right person? I want to. <laughs> She's like never been there though. I want to so badly. I just can't do it. And then I'll still get like nervous. Like, Oh, I get so nervous during, I was celibate for two years. So I didn't have sex at all. I didn't kiss nothing. That's crazy. 
coming back to having sex is fucking terrifying. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And now I'm really awkward. Like I'll kiss somebody and then I'll like giggle and like run off. And he's like, where are you going? I'm like, I don't know. That's where I'm at right now. It's the intimacy. Like once you stop having sex, you're like, wait a second. It becomes so much more intense and like you're more sensitized to it. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm like, wait, this isn't normal for me to just like meet you and put your dick in my mouth and feel super comfortable right away. You know, once you like start finding, if you want it to be with somebody that you want to be with. And so you're like, like it gets like nerve wracking. Yeah. You're like, Oh, I guess we're like exch- exchanging energies. Are you excited to move to New York? There's so many hot people there. I, I I'm staying single in Indiana because I know that I am not going to date somebody from Indiana one. Cause I'm moving. So that just doesn't make sense. And two, I'm like, my dating pool is about to, be so much bigger oh yeah I feel like that's so overwhelming to me (laughs) really I'm excited for it like I honestly though my biggest fear is I'm gonna get there three weeks in I'm gonna meet someone and fall in love and then I'm gonna be like I'm happy I don't know why I ever did comedy (laughs) Uh, no no I think it'll push you because your husband will be funny too and then you'll come up with other shit because of him or like New York you could get a videographer boyfriend or photographer boyfriend Mm. so it's aligned and they're not like jealous yeah. Because we were talking to Rachel Wolfson about this and she was like, never date a guy who doesn't think you're funny. Oh. And I like recently, I like, I feel like the last guy I hooked up with like didn't think I was funny Ooh. or like experienced. I, you, you could just tell there's like a difference yeah. in like where we're at, but I could feel the difference instead of it just being I absolutely, comfortable. I, I only date guys that like base me off my personality, that like me off my personality. Like that's, you have to like me off my personality first. But do they enjoy your comedy too? Um, yeah. Like you don't want to date a guy who's like, oh, you'll you'll get better. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I like, I briefly talked to this one guy one time and like after a show, he's like, I have notes. And I was like, I got to go. I had that happen to me too. He actually gave notes to other comedians and I was like, I'm the only one you're fucking. So I'm the only one you can give notes to. to And then gave other comedians notes. Yes. Was so bad. No. No. He had never done comedy in his life. He actually sent me a text and was like, I just wrote a joke. Nothing about it was funny. Yeah. Yeah. We were like, there's no, there's no punchline. I don't want to date somebody that's like trying to get into comedy. No, I'm not. I'm not a teacher. Mm. Not yeah. Anyways. I want you to be able to teach me. Yeah. But exactly. not in a condescending way. Yeah. Like someone that just like aligns perfectly. Like maybe they do like a really cool podcast or something, but not like not so much stand up comedy. And yeah. then like I focus on stand up comedy and not so much a po- like we're we're like aligned but not like competing. Yeah. yeah, I just want a creative somebody who has like that same mindset who thinks about things in similar ways but isn't yeah competing. Yeah, but not the crazy creative where they're like poor and mean. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want a starving artist. I really yeah. don't. <laughs> no, I want an artist who's made it. Yeah. <laughs> like someone who already made it yeah that's why i'm like that's why i'm single because i just haven't gone to the level where i'll meet my husband i just keep telling this female comedians don't have a baby until they're like 40 it's like yeah. they were like waiting to get to that point we're kind of like doctors in that aspect. Yeah. Like we'll all be doing IVF in our forties and just hoping for the best. Freezing our eggs and hoping they don't come out weird. And like, do you think I can just throw them in the freezer? Or do I actually have to? You know, to go do it. That's huh? fucking stupid. I'll There's extract your eggs for you. Everything. Just a turkey baster. Just yeah. And I'm like, why is there b- vials of blood <laughs> in like the is it blood? fridge? Well, I don't even that's know. Your, you're like releasing no eggs. Can you fertilize the ones that are being released? I think those are dead, right? In my mind, I'm so dumb. Your eggs are just like easily extractable. I yeah, feel like, like you have to get through the cervix. Where are your eggs? <laughs> Wait, what? You have to go past the fallopian tubes. I know that. You have to go into the fallopian tubes? Yeah. Oh, and they're sitting in these little things in the uterus? Oh, they're in your ovaries. Because there's this there's this uh, video and it's like the journey of the sperm. And whenever any of my friends would like when it was bad to be pregnant. Like in college, they'd be like, I think I'm pregnant. I would make them watch this video and it's called the journey of the sperm. The sperm has to do so much to get to the eggs. It has to like get in half of them die within the first 10 seconds. Good. Then they have to go through the fallopian tubes. Half of them just swim to the wrong tube. Cause only one tube takes you to the eggs. 
Oh, one the one's a falsy. Yeah, yeah. Oof, it's a little false fallopian tube. Oh, what? God. And then they have to like swim through acid. So it's like basically so only the through strong acid? survive. Yeah, yeah the, our pH. Is... How did I survive? How did my sperm make That's it? That's what I always wonder. I'm like, because I'm not strong. Yeah, sometimes when you see the sperm that made it through, and you're like. Should have been another one, you know? So hard. I, you know, I feel like it had, like, some people, I'm like, it had to be, like, a head-to-head competition with another sperm, and the other one just, like, accidentally tripped, and, like, that's how we got anyone named It's Derek, like the tortoise you know? versus like, the hare. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it's, like, go-karts in the pussy? Go- oh, yeah. Like, just bumping sure. into like each other? Park. Yeah. They're knocking like, each other out. One yeah. of them just, like, falls off the edge. Somebody and just punches each other in the out. face. I can see that. <laughs> I always felt like I couldn't get pregnant i've been coming inside so many times um <laughs> but like by a boyfriend like my high school sweetheart and then that that was it maybe um <laughs> and i was like how did i not get pregnant because i can't be on birth control oh. um like at risk for strokes and oh. i've been like hospitalized and i've tried a bunch of stuff so but i have the copper iud even that was horrible for my body so i'm like birth control sucks but i'm like oh how come i haven't gotten pregnant ever and never had a pregnancy scare and i literally think it was because my body like through all the trauma was such a, a not good environment you know what I mean? Like not conducive to having a baby. So my body was just like, no. Your tubes were just like tight. Yeah. They were like, there's no fucking way. Or like they tried and it just like died naturally. Well, they have inside. hostile uteruses. Like that's a thing. Your uterus can just be angry at the world <laughs> and it won't let you have kids. Uh, that's what I would think that's like what happening. it's called a hostile uterus? It's called a hostile uterus. Which like if a doctor had to diagnose me with a hostile uterus, I feel like I'd punch him in the face. I'd be like, you want to see fucking hostile, right? bitch? I can be and hostile. And he'd be like, and those are the hormones coming out. And she's like, no, come! <laughs> <laughs> your uterus is in there just... <laughs> What's your canon moment? Oh, God. I really don't know. I couldn't tell you. I've had like so many that... What's a canon moment? It changes your life forever? Changes it. Yeah. Probably, like, honestly and, like, deeply. <laughs> like, when my sister went to prison, I was oh. like, I just don't oh. want to be, like, that person. You know, like, I was just like, her, like, kids had to move in with us. And, like, the kids were, like, six months old and five years old. Oh, man. And I, like, remember watching them, like, be so awkward and, like, not know how to do That's so life. scary. Yeah, and I was just like, I want to. And I was kind of going, like, down the same path as her. Like, I was kind of like a rebel Really? The cars. Like, yeah, br- breaking into cars and like <gasps> smoking cigarettes. Like, no, trailer she seems park. so sweet. I know, don't I? You had a little wild <laughs> face. Like, it's the therapy. <laughs> but I remember like watching her and I was like, I just don't want to do that. So I like quit going to trailer parks as much. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. What do you think is like a canon moment in every woman's life that changes them? Ooh. Ooh, when you come for the first time. <laughs> Oh my God. The first time I came, I like didn't know. I didn't know for guys or girls that there was one specific moment. So like for guys, I thought as soon as they inserted you, it was just come, 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 just all over you. Like you could get pregnant at any moment. Sex education yeah. failed us. Oh yeah. my God. There was none. So I was just like, yeah, like I, I think like, well, like the first guy that I got with, he really did come in like five seconds. So like after that, I was just like, okay, they just like are just constantly coming just everywhere. <laughs> Did he come all over you? I think he came inside me. And then he just kept going. So that's why she thinks. Oh, oh, he kept going. That's the hardest thing a man can do, by the way, is when they come inside you and then they're still hard and they keep going. And I'm like, oh, wow. This man was just pumping it out at 16, just still going. And so I was like, I guess they just like come, 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 come over and over again. And so that's how I thought guys came. And then I thought girls just came the entire time, too. So like in my mind, I had been just fucking coming constantly. But you didn't even know what coming was. mm -mm. But you weren't coming. She was like, this just feels so good. Yeah, like for like, the because this is like my boyfriend at the time. So like first three months, I'm like, I am just a come master, like camaraderie, like I'm a comer. And so this whole time I'm like, I thought I was just like hella coming. And then the first time it actually happened, I remember I was like on top of him and I was like, "Mm, something's gonna happen. (laughs) Like I got really scared. I was like, ah! And then I came for the first time and I was like, okay, I don't know what that was. But but I love it. <laughs> Let's try that again. That's what happened the first time I squirted. I was like, what the fuck is happening? Am I peeing myself right now? And he was like, just keep going. And I was like, keep going where? <laughs> what is happening? Some and then I, sp- I always yeah. thought like I was going to pee. I, I always, always feel never like I'm going to pee. Point and because I was always in my head. I didn't come. I was having sex for years and I didn't come until I was like 21, maybe 22. 
21 or 22 years old. Multiple, boy- multiple boyfriends, even by myself. I thought there was, there was nothing more annoying and boring on the planet than trying to masturbate by yourself. I just couldn't. Agreed. And I was like, why would I want to do work? You know what I mean? Like it was work to me. And I was just like, people like use their hands and I'm like down there and I'm like, this is stupid. I'm trying to move in different ways. I don't understand it. I never learned how to play guitar. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> that's way more difficult than a guitar. And, yeah. And then this, my bio TA ate my pussy in college and made me come. And I was like, wow. And then he just left and I was never the same. Oh my God. That was your canon moment. And then I became a slut. And then you, got and then I was like, I'm going to come with every hot man. So good <laughs> at biology. <laughs> I've hooked it with two bio teachers. What are, and the what other the one matters? had a, they both had huge dicks. What is it about nerdy bio men? Oh, I used to like, love my high school bio they, teacher. They he was short, so hot. But they had hogs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's why I love short kings. They always That's have why great they love dicks. Biology. They're like, biology gave me this. Yeah. So. That's so That's true. true. They're like, I'm They're gonna grateful study this for shit. it. Learn it. <laughs> Replicate it. Mm. Just, are you a, do you say dick or cock? Dick. Has anyone ever said cock to you? What? Has anyone ever said cock to you? No, she grew up in Indiana. No. Like, like in like a, like you're being a fucking cock or like in a sexual way. (laughs) In a sexual way. "Mm -mm." So we have like this theory that white people say cock more versus black people saying dick more. So we've asked all of our guests this question and we tried to poll them. But we had a slutty fucked up mom. So we say cock because we heard her say it all the time. (laughs) She says cock. Oh. Yeah. Mm-mm. She's like, give me that big cock. <laughs> it's like the Boston accent too. I don't know. Cause I grew up like, I, I like hillbilly. So like a cock was a bird. Like, it, like oh. you know, it was like the thing out. You like, you weren't going to be like, suck my cock. And then they'd be like, well, I guess I got to go get it out of the barn. Like what? <laughs> yeah. I got to go get my rooster. <laughs> you don't have a, uh, like an accent. Mm mm. Did you train yourself out of it? Yeah, sometimes on stage when I get nervous, it'll come out really bad, and I hate it. Like, in Boston, I was nervous, and I remember a girl came up to me, she's like, I didn't realize that you guys were all so country. I was like, no, that was just my nerves, so I'll get like... No, that's so cute. We both actually trained ourselves out of our Boston accents because we thought it sounded stupid. I love Boston accents. I wish I had one. Now, as a comedian, I was like, that was the worst thing I could have done. Oh, my God. Imagine if I was on stage and I'm like, listen, you motherfucker. Yeah. I'm going to go to the fucking store. Like, I'm just... Oh. Yeah. It would have been so good. I love it. I love a Boston accent. I love that, like, everyone in Boston just says whatever. (laughs) Like we don't give a fuck. Uh uh-uh. uh. Like yeah. there's no words that are off limit. Like I'm like, mm, yeah, well, awesome, but yeah. you know, you'll hear a lot of people yelling slurs in the streets in yeah. Boston. It's yeah. bad. It is definitely not a. It feels less a racist wrong city. from a Boston person though, with the accent on it. I'm like, mm, I don't know. It doesn't feel like wrong. it doesn't sound as bad, right? Yeah. I don't know what it is. Like I feel like, like we like, just make everything sound cool. But yeah, like, that's true. It's like a cool hate crime. Kind like of the way. F word. Everyone in Boston says the F word, mm-hmm. and and it like it sounds like it's just like an average verb or adjective mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you're like, explaining why your like kitchen sink won't turn on. You're like yeah. it's being a F word. Yeah, but, like, from Boston. I'm like, mm. or they say the R word a mm-hmm. lot. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. A girl said that to me in Boston, and I was like, she's like, what are you she fucking ca- retarded? <laughs> yeah. She, well, she couldn't get my bracelet on. To like get into the thing, and she's like, I, "I'm a, I'm a being fucking retarded right now." I can't yeah, get this thing on. and I was like, ah, "I love that." <laughs> like, yeah, I like the way she said it. Like that's the only reason I was just like, "I like the way your words." It's kind flow of together. like um, how Jim Jeffrey says "cunt." Like yeah. Australian people say "cunt," mm. and it doesn't sound. He's just a bloody cunt. Yeah, or is that is bloody? Do they say bloody in Australia? Yeah, they do. Yeah, Britain blood, must have taken over cunt. somewhere. That yeah, they colonized. Like, they say like "cunt," that like bloody "cunt." Cunt. Cunt. I don't know. Cont. Cont. Is Nor that British? Cleo. <laughs> Cleo. No. We do accents, okay? <laughs> you do accents? We're no, so bad at them. I'm so bad at them. They all, they just all come out like racist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like I should be better at them. I think so too. Like not you, but like I'm like uh, in comedy and wanting to do acting and all of those things and content, it's so valuable to be able to Mm-mm. do an accent or like pretend to be someone else. Or speak another language. Or speak another language and we just can't. Uh, I dated this guy that could do accents and like he was always trying to teach me and I'm like, it was hot to watch him like try yeah. to teach me. And then I couldn't focus because I was like, 
and then you just go blah 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 yeah, make out. Uh, I'll go from like German to Indian to like just all merges to into Australian, one. and people are like, "What was that?" I'm like, "I have no idea." You're like racist. That's what <laughs> have you ever seen Grey's Anatomy? No. You look like one of the really hot doctors on there. I think somebody just told me that Eliza Minnick. Eliza Minnick. I'll show you after the pod. Somebody did just tell me that I look like a doctor from Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. So- anybody with my hair blonde and then I dyed it dark and everyone's like I got um uh Gil the girl from Gilmore Girls was it Gilmore Rory yeah maybe maybe it was know. the mom I've never seen I never that watched show it. I don't know I never watched it either but ever since dark hair it's like I guess I give more of a a normal vibe do you find that you're treated differently now by men that your hair's dark Yes, I have a whole theory on this. Okay, because I I've done blonde. I've, mm-hmm. We're not we're naturally brunette, so I've done blonde and red. Yeah, and I, total difference with how men talk to you and treat you. I told you, pink hair drew in a way different crowd than what I was expecting because I had my hair pink, and I thought it would be way cooler. I thought the guys I was gonna get with pink hair would be better. And then with blonde hair, I feel like in general people are nicer to you. Mm-hmm. Like people are just kinder to you as a blonde and I have no idea what that is. I think people just like assume you're less cunty with well, blonde that's hair. That's what we call blonde white people. supremacy. Blonde yeah. people are like, um, it's a younger trait. It's younger genetic characteristic that is associated Pedophilia. with, mm. yeah, literally with kids. Yeah. So if you're blonde, you're seen as more innocent. I don't know why, but I think it's like some biological thing, bro. Yeah, I, I do think that's what it is. I think people just... And they look at you like you're like younger and more innocent, which is odd because like and I'm like not dumb naturally a blonde. Like you see like my facial features, everything else about me like screams like you have dark features. But as long as I had blonde hair, I thought people were nicer to me. And now with dark hair, I think people, I don't know, respect me a little bit more, but also a little bit meaner. Yeah. Interesting. When, when I was a brunette, I, people were like, oh, she can get it done. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like Miss Independent. When I was blonde, all the guys who were not interested in me when I was brunette were like, hey, Jamie. And I was oh, like, no, yeah. no, no. I'm the same person. We're not doing this. Yeah. But I noticed I got approached more. I got like the way that men spoke to me was completely different. And now mm-hmm. with red hair, everyone's just like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, but I have a different shade of red. And I feel like people I think they view it as like innocent. They do. Because they, they kind of see yeah. like Shirley Temple vibes with the curly hair. And they're like, oh, she's baby. And I'm like, I all am the, baby. It all goes back to how much do we look like children, you know, which is so fucked up. It's so gross. Yes, because you give me like innocent vibes for sure with like red hair. And like, you're just like. Wait till you see those dick sucking eyes. <laughs> that your, changes. your eyes are the most innocent part about oh, you, I feel like. no. You, just you wait, Buster Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I'll suck she your dick nice and good. <laughs> She looks up and then we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not. Yeah. When I get drunk, I give eyes to men if I'm interested in them. What are the eyes? I can't do it. I'm not drunk. Uh, She goes. Oh, so you go big. Yeah, I go big. Like the doe eyes. She's like. I love that. Because I I always go like slit. Because when I'm drunk, my eyes automatically get like a little bit like. Oh, oh, but that's like bedroom sexy eyes. Yeah, that's what I get. But I want like the doe eyes where I'm like. But yeah, I don't, like, I don't um, some people are doe eyed people and some people are like siren eye people, I think. Yeah. We, I feel like we have more of the like, yeah, we close our eyes and they'd be more seductive. Mm-hmm. And I try to look like, I try to do like the deer thing and then I'm like, I don't even know. I just look scared. It, yeah. People are like, you look crazy. Yeah, like, like, are, are you, you okay? okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't look good trying to look sexy. Yeah, I used do. to try to take OnlyFans like photo shoots and like look sexy. And I was like, that's not the look for me. It's uh, not I've going tried to well. I've like photo shoots and like lingerie before and I'm so awkward. Like taking nudes and stuff. It was like this like lingerie shoot that we did with this photographer and they were supposed to be like classy, like black and white blurry. So they're like move a lot. So I'm like, <laughs> like literally having a seizure in the place. And they were like, okay, not that girl. Uh, you, know, like, you just stay still. <laughs> how did they come out? Actually, kind of cool. I love that. Kind of cool, actually. I they, like, like photo shoots like that. Yeah, it's cr- yeah. I'm not. Sometimes I can turn on the the model and I'm like, oh, I'm posing. And then la- last night we were at an event and this like hot photographer was like, let me take photos of you. And he was like, he's like, can I, he's like, come over here and he's like showing me where to pose. And he was so sweet. He's like, I just want to take pictures of you. And I was like, 
I want to have sex with you. <laughs> and then I, because I wanted to, I was like, he's attractive. You got so awkward. He's Argentinian and he Ooh. like had an accent and everything. Ooh. And I was like, he's like, why are you uncomfortable? And I'm like posing and I'm like, I'm like, I can't model. What are we doing? It's my go-to pose. Yeah. I hate when I do this one with the hand on the hip. I'm oh. like, like hand on hip, like chin back. I'm like, am I in a sorority in 2018? What am I doing? We yes. were raised though to pose like that. Yeah. Like it in was a row. always the hip and out. everyone would be in a row. It'd be like, look at our power pose. See, and I feel like you're Gen Z. So like, I feel like Gen Z learned like this one, like the like hand out, don't look at me kind of blurry oh, I like photo. That. Like, this, oh. this is this photo I'm trying to learn. It's like you go like this, like, mm, I don't want my picture taken. Take it. And then you put one hand over. That's the one I think. Yeah, it's like, I can't let people know I want to be seen. Yeah. That's what I want to be it's seen. It's so cool and mysterious. Yeah. I desperately want to be mysterious, but I overshare far too much for that. Yeah, I can't shut the fuck up. I love trauma. I love a good trauma dump. If we're yeah. not trauma dumping, what are we doing? Get oh, out. Yeah. And if you don't have any trauma to dump, also get out. Yeah, my friend was just telling me, she's like, the best way to, like, connect with a man is to, like, emotionally get them to, like, trauma dump on you. Yeah. Like, it's not through sex. It's, it's through, like... And getting them to cry and hold, like, you have to hold them at one point because they're talking oh about, and they're like, God. I just didn't expect to get so emotional. And you're like, mom Getting a man to cry. I did expect it. Mm. Getting wow. a man to cry, getting his mom to like you. Two coolest things I think yes. you can do. Yeah. What else can like, you do? You can't leave me. How can Ooh, we manipulate That's how men. I feel what, about like when I play with their ass. Mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't leave me now. Oh, and if you do, not. you'll remember me with every girl you've been through because you're gonna feel you're not gonna feel comfortable enough to ask because yeah. they're not as open as I am. So you're gonna be like weird about it, and it's just gonna be this kink that you have forever now. Yeah, if I've licked your tank, like, <laughs> you know, mm, yeah, you'll never get that back. Yeah, you'll, I just know they're never gonna forget me. That's a weird. You all can't. Ourselves. It's true. It is true. Yeah. What's the craziest thing that you've done for a man? <laughs> uh, definitely lick Tay, that one. <laughs> but I don't even think that's that crazy. Like, I'm one of those people, like, whatever you like me to kind of person. Yeah. Like, if you're, like, whatever you're into, like, it's, I'm not, like, fun and kinky on my own. So I just kind of listen to them. Like, I'm like, oh, that's what you like? Cool. Me I'll too. I'll do it. Buddy. Like, yeah, I'll have, do whatever you like. Have you ever done anything crazy for a man? Like, not sexually, but like, you were a little tapped at the time, you know? Like, to stay with them? Like, yeah. yeah. Everything. Um, I don't know. Like, I just, I, I don't think I'm that crazy. I think I'm just like so interested in somebody loving me that I'll just like do whatever they want to do. <laughs> You sound like me. You get love I don't from think your I've parents. done anything like that crazy, but like definitely like probably gone on trips too early or something like that. Like met their parents too early. Like I moved in within six months. <laughs> yeah. I showed up at his job to see if he was with another girl. Did you do that? Yes. And he was with <laughs> another girl. I memorized his following list so that I know when he had someone new. <gasps> Okay, maybe I'm not like that. Like, <laughs> fun. I go to Instagram story viewers so you don't know I'm looking at your profile. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to give you that satisfaction. I've never created like a fake profile or, or anything. Oh, we but... created a joint one during the pandemic for like a group of friends so we could have access to all of our exes like <laughs> info. That's Great. And we created like a Finsta and we had photos for it and we followed other people so we would have followers. So we looked real like. So I worked for like a social media agency. So I always had access to other people's accounts because I worked for an agency. So I had access to all their accounts and I would just like my ex like. Sorry, Herculean meal prep is looking at your story so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That's good. So I would just use there. That's smart. I didn't even think about doing.
like, oh, I can't believe you would do that. And I'm like, we're not together. Like, we're not together. I don't know how else to explain this to you in any other way. We've been broken up for like a week. You just fucked the dude in front of him? Yeah, I literally like just opened I've done mouth, that to a like, man too. I'm like, you're not getting the point. So mm-hmm. I'm literally, you're going to watch me walk home and leave this bar with another man because you're not understanding. I don't yeah. like you. Yeah. And that's pretty much what happened. He just like, he wasn't getting it. And so like, I, uh, I actually stayed at a friend's house and then I had her bring me to my house the next morning. And I was like, that is his car in my driveway. And he had like gone into my house somehow and he was laying in a robe on my couch. And I was like, what TV oh show was he watching? He, he was like oh on his God. side being like, I'm waiting for you, baby. I really do remember it. It was like, uh, Wheel he was of watching Fortune. Maury. <laughs> Wheel, Wheel of Fortune. Fortune? Yes. That's so weird. Chilling there on my couch, like watching TV. I'm like, what are you doing? That's such a dad move right there. Yeah. Just like in my, my robe, probably had used my body wash. Oh God. He so didn't have a place to live. This is what happened. That's probably true. And then I had another guy that I think was homeless. I did really I did sure. a homeless guy once. I think he was homeless. I think his wife had kicked him out of the house <laughs> and like he didn't have anywhere to go. So yeah. I like just housed him like just like a like a You're taking a, in a stray kitten, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> Foster I care. temporarily housed him for a little bit. Yeah. Wow, did you feed him too? I didn't feed him. No, he like he only ate butterfingers. <laughs> like he ate so many fucking butterfingers. That's it's so weird. Yeah, definitely didn't have a place to live. <laughs> he just like smoked weed and ate butterfingers all the time. And then I was like, man, you got to leave. Like you got to go home now. I How did, did a you- guy who didn't have a bank account or a license Red or flags. a stable place to stay. And I was like, are you a spy? <laughs> That's I'm what into thought it. it was. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, you, you're not a bad guy. Like you're just a, an international spy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, he's part of M16. <laughs> We had an argument. She was like, Emily, it's fine if a man doesn't have a license. I'm like, Jamie, are you trying to convince me to fuck men who don't have licenses? I was like, no, I'm just trying to convince you to not judge me for doing it. My friend was just going on a date. She was like, I have to pick him up. I'm like, pick him up. She goes, yeah, he doesn't have a license. And I'm like, why are you going? Yeah. Is this your younger friend? Yeah. I'm like, you could go ahead and cancel now. Mm, Did she go on the date? She did. Of course. We always do. How'd it go? It was not good. And now he like kind of like... Not stalks her, but definitely like keeps reaching out. I'm like, see, that's why you don't go out with men that don't have a car. Yeah, he's got just want to hang motives. out all the time. Yeah, he's like, oh, you gave me a ride that one time. Look, I've got a, I gotta get uh, to work. And they'll make you feel very loved at the same time, mm-hmm. and you don't even realize you're being used for your car and yeah. your resources, your bank account. <laughs> you yeah. ever hear someone say something, and then you think of somebody's name in your head, and you're like, that was. That person right there. Oh, yeah. I was thinking like four. <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah. categorize people. I know that's not a good thing to do, but I do. What are your categories? Mm, like I have like, you know, like crazy girls. So I have like the crazy girls that I was like friends with in college. I have like a couple from high school. And then like whenever I see other people that remind me of them, they just go into that category. Okay. And then I have like my boss, like my really toxic boss. He was just like a finance bro. So anybody that reminds me of him goes into like that category, you know? So I just like, I take one person then, and then I categorize everybody else around that person. So you find like different archetypes. So you have like a Steven, a Jane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it'd be like it's an like the- Ellie, a Kyle. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's like the acquaintances. There's the people that I don't really like, but I have to talk to because of work. There's, you know, like those are the categories. I put people in like a Venn diagram of boxes. You know, it's just, they're all connected, but it's how far away you are from me because I'm the main box. Wait, so are you in the middle? No, no. I'm at the beginning. Okay. And, and then, then the further like, away you get from me, you're all the way at the end in like a, a tiny box. And I don't even think about you at all because I have ADHD and I forget you once you leave my sight, you know? Yeah. That's the best part of ADHD. Yeah. Just like forgetting things. And yeah. You're like, I'm oh like, oh, yeah. you exist. 
I forgot about I you. I forgot about how you ruined my life. Well, people from high school that are married now with kids, they're all aged way more than the people who are just single and having fun. Yeah. I think sometimes I'm like, I get sad about that. It's, I grew up in a small town where everybody, it was like, I had a very specific plan for my life when I was younger. Like I bought a house. I had a very stable boyfriend. I like did all these things. I had a really good job. I did all this until like 26. And then when I was 26, I like moved to Indy and I was like, I want to do something different. I like, I didn't even sell my house. I was like renting it out. Cause I was like, I'll, I'll go back there in like a mm-hmm. couple of years and do my little like settled down life. And then it just, here I am. But I look back at the people from my high school that actually did that. And I'm like, on one hand, I feel like I like maybe fucked up. But on the other hand, I'm like, I look better. I feel better. I act better. Like I'm a better person. I'm having more fun. Yeah. You're doing cool shit. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we have similar childhoods. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my sister also went to jail. So my dad and his wife, small town. Yeah. Um, and I do feel like everyone's families in big groups and they were all close and I wasn't like a part of that. I was always on like the outside. Yeah. And then I did the corporate America thing and like made good money. And then I was like, why am I doing this? Yeah. I don't want to do what everyone else is doing. How you create strong, funny women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your sister has to go to prison and your dad has to like kind of not like you. Exactly. <laughs> or like flee the state. Yeah. Or you likes to, you like, too you- much. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that what's going on? Like your dad likes you a little too much that you're like coddled? Honestly, dude, I don't even know at this point, but my therapist thinks so. I wouldn't say coddled. That's not, not coddled. No, 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 definitely not. Oh. There's just some weird tension. Tension. <laughs> you should describe a relationship with your dad is weird tension. Well, he just yeah. married a, a girl from Uganda that's her age. Oh, always almost, makes like comments about my body. Just, you know, like, like um, what is it called? Um, like parentification. It's like incest, but not emotional mm. incest. Yes. That's what it's oh, called. Okay. So, so like, it's kind of like when moms are too close valuable. to their sons. Yeah, yeah. 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 You were only valuable based on like the way that you looked and that yes, kind of stuff. Yes. Yes. Fun stuff. Ooh. Yeah. My dad just didn't care at all. Like I could have <laughs> done anything. He'd have been like, ah, just don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get in trouble a lot? Like with the police? Mm, only a couple times in, with the police when I was younger. I got arrested at a Nickelback concert, which I know, like, the most Epic. embarrassing part of that story is that I was at a Nickelback no, concert. No, that's First a great all, opener. Nickelback <laughs> is great. Okay, and anyone you. who says they don't like Nickelback is just following trends that don't even make sense. No, Nickelback, Nickelback is hits. amazing. I completely agree. They came out with all bangers. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if I would... No, I would I don't definitely even think go I can to name a, concert. a song right now, but I I remember how Looking they made me back feel. Look at me, I see that I never really got it. I mean, like, oh yeah, emotion, okay. check. A full band, check. Acoustics, good. Singing, wait, great. is like, Steve? Uh, who's the guy that mom thought was hot? Is he from Nickelback? And he lives in Massachusetts. Aerosmith? Oh, that's Aerosmith. Oh, that's Steven Tyler. Never mind. My mom. All- Loved my him. mom also and she like Steven met Tyler. him and Steven Tyler. <clears throat> I was going to be named Steven Tyler if I was a boy. Really? Yeah. That's how much my mom loves Steven Tyler. Did she ever fuck him? I wish. I hope. I hope she still I feel like our mom would have. Like she slapped his butt once. It was this whole thing. Steven Tyler. They met butt? and they like talked and then my mom like grabbed his ass and was like, mom, you got to stop assaulting people. Wait, you were there? No. Oh. No. She had pictures though. Of him, of, of her grabbing his ass? Um, uh, Yeah. What a family fit photo. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Are you Steven Tyler's daughter? I sometimes I wonder. Oh. I don't know my real dad. And I think there's some weird sketchy shit going on there. And I'm like, who's my real dad? And I think it's probably a rich man. My mom got paid off or something. <laughs> <laughs> she says he was a bad man who used to beat her. And so she left and fled with me as a and baby. she won't tell you who it is. No. And the, my birth certificate knows. was forged. It's like not real. It has my like stepdad who adopted me, her de- real dad. Mm-hmm. Um on it so there's just like I don't even know and I literally at one point I, I thought I went through the list of who it could be and I was like maybe it's Steven Tyler that would be awesome we gotta do like a side by side we gotta look <laughs> it up is that why you're Tyler we can put that up yeah we can put that uh-huh. up I look too much like my dad I know I'm my father's daughter yeah I look just like my mom and dad it's unfortunate and you, do you notice as you get older like you're like oh I'm never gonna be like them or like their mannerisms and then like it pops up out of nowhere and you're like oh my god that's exactly like I looked just like how my mom looked Mm -hmm. during certain things Mm -hmm. and I'm like oh no it hurts yeah like even like the way like my face goes and I'm like 
and I like get out of bed. I'm like, oh, that's exactly how my mom would get out of bed with that weird face on. I, I hated it. Yes. And I'm like becoming her. Yes. I kind of uh. like it though, even though like your relationship with your family isn't perfect, like and people have been shitty. I kind of like knowing that you're like an amalgamation of people who have loved you, even if they didn't love you the right way. Yeah. I've been coming to accept that my parents did their best. You know, all they can do is what they knew to do with the information they had at the time. And none of our parents were going to therapy. None of them were working through their trauma or understanding that like word trauma hitting kids was therapy. bad. Like, so nobody knew any of this shit. And so I think she was watching it. And she's like, how about we just fix this? Mm. And then we'll figure out the rest of her problems. <laughs> like, this is probably where it stems from. Yeah. And then uh, it was the best thing that we ever did was my mom and I went to therapy together when I was like 16. Did oh. it help fix your relationship? Yeah. And I think like she realized that she was like kind of being crazy in the wrong ways. And then I was definitely just like an emotional bitchy teenager. And I realized that. So just... Oh, and our therapist was like this little gay man <laughs> and he smoked cigarettes during the entire therapy session. What? Yeah. I love him already. I lo he, he did it like in his like, he had like a, a second house or whatever. Like he had his house and then he had like basically like a garage that mm -hmm. he had converted into his therapy station. He just smoked cigarettes and was like, yeah, well, I think she just is going to act like that. And if you're going to be mad at her for making the bed wrong, maybe you should be mad at her for having sex with weird guys. I mean, it just seems like you're wrong about you're mad about the wrong stuff. And I was like, wow, it's wow. like a southern gay man. That See, our mom would that. like be like, all right, we're going to therapy today. And she would sit us down and she'd be like, if you say anything about what we do in this motherfucking house, I will beat the fuck out of you. And then we'd be like, OK, so we go into therapy and she'd be like, how's everything at home? And we'd all be like. Great. So good. <laughs> this is wonderful. <laughs> that sounds like every CPS I, I visit passed, I've ever had in my life. I and I'm like, please help. And my mom would threaten. She'd be like, Wait, if, it if was we, court if, ordered though, right? Like, yeah. Your mom so if like we said you anything, to to it was because like my dad was like, it was during their divorce. So he was like, she's abusing the kids. And so CPS would come and then she'd be like, don't tell them I'm abusing you. <laughs> and then, or like, and then she'd be like, otherwise, like you're going to get separated. And my mom would always be like, if you ever speak up, like your brother and sister are going to get taken and have to go into foster care. And it's better that we're all together than like separated. And so like, that was... I made me afraid to speak up. Yeah. My mom used to That's always so tell me up. that I was going to get raped in foster care. If I ever told people that I was being abused and that I would get fucked up and that I would never have a stable home. She was like, you can't talk about Why it. Why was that like our parents way of scaring us? Like my mom was like, everyone's going to rape you. And I was like, what the fuck? That's literally, yeah. My mom from like day one, she'd be like, if you walk out in the world, you're going to get raped. Yeah. Like, and but you I'm know like, what? It's actually true. Cause I have been raped. So <laughs> yeah. you know what? Thank you, mom. You taught me good. <laughs> but like they, they taught us like, okay, you're going to get right. But they didn't say like, hey, How to prevent in a it? situation and if someone does this, like leave. This isn't a safe thing that they do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, they didn't explain how it happened. They were just like, sometimes you're walking out on the street. Guy just rapes you. I don't like <laughs> Good fucking luck I'm out like, there. They don't tell you that it's going to be with like this guy that you're kind of dating and like you just like weren't ready to have sex with yes. them and you didn't know how to say no because you weren't taught how to say no to people because your yep. parents didn't tell you that. Oh, and they didn't let you say no to them. So you <laughs> exactly. never developed boundaries. Yeah, exactly. It's so fucked. It's like, you're, it's your fault I got raped, mom. <laughs> it's your fault. It is. <laughs> It really is. It really is. Shout out to my mom. <laughs>
<laughs> right, you please. know, we're all here. We're funny. We're on a po- we have a podcast. You're killing it. So you, they did something, right? <laughs> right. Right. Or maybe two wrongs made a right. You know, I think that's what it is. It's like when two ugly people have a kid and it turns out hot. Yeah. Like our parents fucked us up, but then we figured it out in the end. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. I think it's easier if you have two fucked up parents than just one fucked up parent because that's too wrong. You know what I mean? Well, normally yeah. the two fuck ups attract, you know, and they're like, I'm going to s- hate you for the rest of my life and then get like, divorced at 50. Yeah. A narcissist and a codependent is like the like dream team. <sighs> Beautiful. And I see so many relationships like that from like the boomer generation. It was just a woman that was like willing to compromise and a guy that was like, I'm the best person there is. Mm-hmm. And then they're really not. No. And I see a lot of our parents' generations, like the women just let their husbands be pieces of shit. They'll never stand up. They're afraid to speak up because yeah. it will like, do you know what I mean? It's just an like interesting I feel like dynamic. millennial women were the first group of women to really like start standing up for ourselves. Yeah. And then Gen Z, oh, I love Gen Z. They've like figured out like psychology behind the kids, it. The kids, like millennials and Gen Z people are raising children and giving them like actual coping mechanisms. Oh, it's beautiful. Teaching to them see. to love themselves. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow. I watch parents talk to their kids and like go through like regulating their nervous system when they're having an attack. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, she's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no one ever did that. To me. I love watching a man be mean to a Gen Z girl because they just like they. You guys are like, I don't know if it's you specifically, but you'll be like, mm, yeah, your dad didn't love you enough. That's what's wrong with you. And I I'm feel like. like- I think I'm a millennial of Gen Z's. Does yeah. that make sense? Gen- like, what is it called? A zillennial. Zillennial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I'm there, but I'm not quite there where I'm actually mature enough. Like they are like, they're maturing at age 13. Yeah. I'm like, how the fuck do you guys do this? How do you know what communication is so young? That's awesome. It's and awesome. I, like, I'm excited to see, like, I'm excited for the new generation. I can't wait to meet the kids that are raised through this and like, see how they navigate life. Kids that are raised by millennials. Yeah. I'm excited. For but that. there's also still so many pieces of shit. So I think there's still going to be, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a couple of gener- cycles of generations we for the overall it. population to get better, <laughs> but we're starting to. It's, it's happening. Or we might all just die in an apocalypse next year. Who fucking knows? I know. Knows. Literally. Should we um, transition to Stony Baloney? I think we should. And get a little high. I know you don't want to get high, but we also wanted to give you a gift. I know you're flying, so I don't know if you can take it. I think you can. But it's a chill steel pipe, and it's basically like a thermos bong, and you can like put ice cubes in it, and it'll keep it cold for up to 12 Shut hours. Up. My roommates were literally just wanting something like this. Yeah, it's... Oh, my God. They're going to lose it. Yay. Yeah. Right, so if you're listening to this... <laughs> yeah, there are uh, it's the you see the two up there, like the China one that's white, and then the pink one, those are them. That's thank you guys. They're so nice. We love our chill steel pipes. They actually sponsored our event the other night. Our, our live, live event. event. Oh my god, we didn't even talk about our live event. No, we're gonna do a whole solo episode about that. Oh, we are? Yeah. Okay, sweet. So guys, I next sit, week. I sit down. Yeah, put water and ice and it stays that's cold, it. so it's a smoother hit. It's so nice. Thanks, guys. We hope Hell you yeah. enjoy it. <laughs> take a hit later tonight. Right. We'll, we'll bring you some weed to take home with you. All right, let's pack this shit. Oh, God. <sighs> um, All right. I feel like we need another game of this because we've used these so many times. I, th- I We keep going through games so quickly. Come on. <gasps> Best grinder. We right? like to play Best games with our guests. Like all the... Companies just reach out and they're like, let me do this. Like all of this stuff has been just given. That's awesome. If we were in LA, we'd get like free weed and stuff. But is it legal? It's legal here, right? It's um, um, medically. Oh, yeah. How is it in Indiana? So illegal. Oh. Like if you, we were, like- caught with a, if, if you were caught with an eighth, like you'd get arrested. Yeah. It's, like, very backwards in Indiana. Like, we still can't even buy liquor past 8 p.m. on Sundays. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, religious reasons? Yeah, it's, like, a super, like, you know, it's a Bible Belt area. I feel like Massachusetts has, like, a Sunday thing, too, where you can't buy alcohol. Yeah. 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 And on, like, Thanksgiving and Christmas, you're not allowed to, which I don't get, because that's what I'm going to be drinking. It's It's super Catholic. Are you religious? Did you grow up religious or with a religious family? I didn't grow up religious, no. And I'm still not religious. Yeah, but. same. 
My family, my dad's side was really religious. And I guess to say our mom's side was like, they never went to church and they'd be like, I love Jesus. But then they'd like be pieces of shit. So like, it yeah, doesn't really That was count. more so like, we never went to church, but my dad would always be like, God's not going to like this. I'm like, I don't even know anything about God. You guys haven't taught me. Yeah. Anything. You haven't taught me shit. Yeah. I'm like, why am I scared of this man that I know nothing or about? I would be like, if God was real, why would he make me go through this? Yeah. Just the anger as a kid. A a, a contact high. What is like the weirdest sexual experience you've had with a man where you were like, what is he doing? Or like a crazy story. I'll take more of that. Weirdest sexual experience. (laughs) You're thinking of one right now. I know. Well, I'm trying to. Uh, Okay. So, um, this guy, we ended up dating for like three years after this, but we had like met at a bar, went home with him. And then like, we get back to his house and he's just like, kind of like, like not acting right. And so I'm like, okay, like maybe something's wrong with him. He like, uh, laid down on like the side of the bed. He threw up on the bed Oh, and like, no. this is like the weird caretaker in me. I'm like, oh, so I like get him on his side, you know, oh. like, and like make sure he's like, okay, get him on his side, like change the sheets, like basically like coddle him until he falls asleep. And the next morning he's like, he is very hot. Like still to this day, I'm like that. It, he, I still think he's like the hottest guy I've ever dated. And <laughs> things we next do for morning, hot men. he like wakes up and he's like, did I like do anything weird last night? And I was like, yeah, you threw up. That's why we're like laying on your mattress. <laughs> and he was like, oh, I'm so sorry about that. And then like, we just had sex that morning. <laughs> I love how you were like, this isn't a red flag. I'm just going to take care of him. Yeah, and I'm you like, dated him and after. Then we dated for like three years after. Yeah. But we had like the best sex that day and like the best sex I've ever had with any guy ever since. So I'm like, what made you know it what? the best sex? Like we just like meshed well, you know, like sometimes you just fit in someone really well. Yeah. Like Like, literally. Yeah. Like they fit inside you well. And then also like your like legs just like go together well. Yeah. Like your rhythm is good together. Like it's not like we're doing anything like crazy kinky. I'm just like, okay, like this This is is working. Cool. Oh, I thought of another one. So one time I was, (laughs) I was like kind of talking to this guy and I was uh, like watching his house for him. And then another guy texted me. So I had to like unplug all of his cameras. (gasps) (laughs) And you invited him over. Fuck in his bed. (laughs) That's a yes. That's a yes. (laughs) Good for you. That was probably the worst one. I I had sex in my Mm. mom's bed. That's not bad. <laughs> you did too. That's yeah. not bad. <laughs> my sister's like same. Her sister's like we all did. I think I. I think I had sex. It's like a rite of passage in our house. Yeah, yeah. I had sex in my high school bully's bed. <gasps> I was like a fuck you to him. Yeah. Because he had a bed at my boyfriend's house, and I hated his best friend because he was so fucking rude. So one day I was like, we're going to fuck in his bed. And he was like, no, we can't do that. And I was like, yes, we can. It's, and we will. And that's why I fucked in my mom's bed too. I was like, she'll. Sure. She'll get it. She'll know. Yeah, like, fuck, fuck that fuck bitch. Her. Damn, that's savage. How old are you? Mm, like 24, 25. I, I remember when we were talking about like stalking boyfriends. There was this guy I was seeing really two weeks in college and he wanted to date me. And I was like, I'm, it's senior week. Like I was just having fun, you know? And I had left the bar with this like guy or whatever and we're fucking in my house all the window like the sh- like the shades are up i when we were done i woke up to like 40 missed calls and he was like i'm outside your apartment so this dude definitely was outside my window like watching me fuck this other guy and at that Did point i just didn't even he, care like, no so? he was just like i cried and he was like i thought we were something blah blah, blah. and i was just like oh my god you just find a cum sock in the bushes. You know it's him. I know. I'm like, my whole window. I'm like, what is on the you side of my window? And you like just come. by somebody else. Uh, crying. Just but I've never done anything. I, I remember one there. time, one time my ex was a twin. He still is a twin, but uh, I, have, I have multiple exes that are twins. So no one will know which one this is. But when we broke up, I had found out he like cheated on me. And uh, I told him that. I masturbated to the thought of his brother because he's a hotter, more confident twin. 
Did you actually and do that? And that got to him. Or did you just no. do it to, like, get to him? I yeah, just did it to I get to him. Yeah, I sometimes. Just yeah. to, like, hurt someone's feelings. Yeah. 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 Like, I didn't even do that. Like, I lied. That's why when I'm angry, I shut the fuck up. Because I'll say shit to hurt you on purpose, because that's what my mom did. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we're real good at it. We learned from the best. Yeah. yeah, we did. Like, this isn't true, but I know it's going to hurt your feelings so bad. And that's what have you said to me. hurt someone's feelings? Mm. <laughs> I definitely have said, like, your dad is hotter than you. That's always, like, that one always gets them. Because I do date guys that have, like, hot dads sometimes. Ooh. And I'm like, your dad's more successful than you. Like, your dad's better than you. Like, I don't know. Like, that's why you, like, that's why you're mean to me. Because, like, you'll, you know you'll never be as good as him. That one always Oh, hurts. wow. <laughs> I felt that one. <laughs> My dad isn't even successful, and I felt that one. Holy shit. <laughs> well, he's successful at that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. All right. We're going to play same, same, but different for Stony Baloney. So basically, we're going to have a safe card, like something PG, a statement. And then I, we say like a risky statement. And okay. we have to come up with something that can be said in both situations. Got it. Okay. Okay. So the first one would be something you can say while watching a horror movie. And when walking in on your best friend and your sibling, just kill me now. <laughs> it's always the blonde bitches first. Wait, will you repeat it? I'm so dumb. Something you can say while watching a horror movie and then walking in on your best friend and your sibling. Oh, God. I thought there'd be more people here. <laughs> I thought there'd be more people here. Horror movie. Oh, that one's a screamer. I gotta, co I gotta cover my eyes. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, this was scary. <laughs> yeah, that one's a screamer right there. Okay, I'll get better at this. Okay. Yeah, it'll start coming. Something yeah. you can say as a sports commentator and to your surrogate. Weighing um, in at 125, 125. She's going to get came inside real fast. <laughs> All right, and it's happening. She's pushing, and out came the baby. <laughs> Sports commentator and what? To now your that I surrogate? Know up, I'm not as scared. To your surrogate. Someone having your baby. That one's a stupid one. Let's get another one. Something you can say while taking a family photo and when finding out you've been cheated on. My dad? Really? <laughs> We're going to crop him out. I look better than my sister. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. I have coffee. A nine to five job. Why would I say that there? Yeah. <laughs> At least. <sighs> I've always thought my boss the was The commute hot. was never worth it. <laughs> Where's the stapler? I'm looking for revenge. Yeah. <laughs> I want to kill myself. <laughs> God. Can you copy same. this? <laughs> this is hard. This one, these ones are hard. Something you can say while hitting a pinata. And while holding a gun, well, these are these are the randomest mi like mix-ups. <laughs> these are aggressive. Pop off, bitch. <laughs> pop, pop off. Wait, who's this? What's the Cardi B? Pop off. Pop pop pop. Guess who's, who's next? I don't know. Who's yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying to think of the song. Like, pop pop, pop, pop now. Pop. Guess who? Who's bitch? You know what I'm talking about? Wait, pinata and uh, gun. Yeah. yeah, that's messy. It's messy. <laughs> Shit just got messy. That's what I call a Mexican standoff. <laughs> I don't even know. That's a good one. Oh, thanks. But also racist. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Story of my life. All right. Maybe I have some cards. 
Something you can say at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. And to an escort. Let me see that chocolate starfish, baby. Huh. There's fudge everywhere. <laughs> um, I want one of those blue balls. <laughs> I don't want blue balls. I don't know. These are hard. These are really tough. Sorry. Is it me? No, no it's, not. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Something you can say as a psychic and to a MILF. Usually we have really good matchups and it's been like. Something you can say to a psychic and a MILF. I sense big things coming in your future. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. These are tough. Psychic and a MILF. This helps us come up with like. Yeah. Like riffing. Yeah. It's good for like, like crowd, crowd work. work yeah. And stuff. I'm so bad at crowd work. I'm yeah. Really we're trying to get it. better. It's hard. <laughs> um, Psychic and a MILF. <laughs> Psychic and a MILF. The tarot cards say we should fuck. <laughs> Our signs align, so. I don't believe in either one of you. <laughs> Something you can say to your therapist and while doing reverse cowgirl. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I feel vulnerable right now. <laughs> Got nothing. On to the next. Anybody got some juice and crackers? I'm well, gonna drink after this. Is, that, is now a good time to tell you you have AIDS? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now is a bad time to know that dad was gay. Hey, what's my blood type? <laughs> oh, I don't even know my blood type. Me either. Something you can say to your gym teacher. And when they whip out their anal beads. Something you can say to your gym teacher and to your anal beads. And when they whip out their anal beads. <laughs> and to your anal beads. <laughs> you better drop and give me 20 reps, bitch. Do I have to do all of them? <laughs> um, mm. Do I have to do all of them? That's a good one. <laughs> this is hard. Yeah, that uh -huh. was good. I was going to say, it's like, when should we pull out? Or All right, get the balls out. Mm. Can I get up <laughs> off the floor now? <laughs> I'm in pain. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. No means no. I'll just run a mile. <laughs> no means no. <laughs> yeah, raise your hand. Clap your hands if you got hit on by a gym teacher. I can only do this for 10 minutes. I was in fifth grade. <laughs> nice. Well, that was a rootin' tootin' time. <laughs> do we do hot the hot takes instead? Yeah. These are sucking. Hot takes are just like controversial opinions and we can just like riff off them cool see what we got yeah we talk about like mental health we get like serious but then like make jokes but then it's all over My the place life. do you find it exhausting having to be funny all the time yes i can't like especially with That's content why I hate halloween because everyone's like what are you going as for halloween like are you gonna be something funny i'm like it's too much pressure I'm like, I just want to be a slut. Yeah, like, can I just go as slutty? And can I like, look at hot? Because I, I wear t-shirts all year round. Yeah, I've, like, worn the same cockroach costume for, like, three years in a row. Because I'm like, it's funny. And I don't, I'm not that creative with, like, costumes and stuff. Hot take. Men have it easier than women. For sure. Obviously. Yeah. The only thing that we have it easier in is getting free drinks. And getting laid. Like, but not by a good person. Yeah. Like, we can get laid easier, but I wouldn't say better. At what cost? Yeah. Yeah, at what yeah. cost? Hot takes. Famous people are usually happier than regular people. I don't think so. I don't know. I feel like it's the opposite. I yeah. feel like they're depressed. Yeah, I feel like, like, for instance, like, Haley and Justin Bieber, I guarantee they, like, don't get to, like, leave their house very often. Like, it's just, like, I feel like relationships have to be harder for famous people, too, because they have to, like, spend so much time with just the two of them. Are we talking about famous people, like elite celebrities or are we talking about like because there's people who are famous where i'm like like they have a great life i'm thinking like a list yeah i was thinking like elite celebrities like where they can't do anything i even think like angelina jolie and brad pitt like apparently he was abusing her and like hitting her and the kids i don't know i feel like the higher you get the with bigger your ego gets too yeah people just assume money makes problems go away and i'm like no it actually creates a lot more it creates problems yeah I think money creates problems yep 
Oh, hot take. The aisle seat on the airplane is better than the window seat. Facts. No, I love window seat. Window seat all the way. See, I go back and forth. If it's like during the day where it like say it's a 3 p.m. flight, I do aisle seat because then I can like go to the bathroom. I can get up, do whatever I want. But if it's a really early morning where I'm going to sleep the whole time. Yes. Window. window. So you can sleep. Or like a red eye. Yeah. So I can have the window to lean up against. Oh, see, I feel like that would make me want to be in the aisle even more because then I have to disturb people who are sleeping to get up and pee and I have to pee so often. Oh, I don't mind doing that. If I'm sleeping, then I do window. But I can never stay asleep the whole time. Oh, I can. You can? Oh, I'm out. I can't sleep on planes. It is the most uncomfortable... Oh, sometimes I'll put plain noise on to fall asleep. Wait, like, that's, that's your white me. noise? Yeah, that's my white noise. It's, it's like taking plane. off. It's like, all right, here's the seatbelts. Yeah, belts. it has the stewardess and everything, yeah. like clicking. I'm like, Ugh. Do you prefer JetBlue or American for your go-to-sleep sounds? Ooh, I don't know. I prefer Spirit. It just says like, yeah. I prefer, t- I want sounds turbulence. of turbulence and people screaming. <laughs> yeah. That's because she was abused as a kid. It's the chaos she yeah, needs in her I life. I a chaos flight to fall asleep to. Yeah, oh. Uh, I listen to sometimes like people screaming and fighting mm-hmm. and just like dishes breaking and I'm like, ah. Uh. Uh, home. Yeah, I'll go it right to like bed. sounds like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, hot take. Smoking inside should be allowed. Facts. Anything? As a stoner, I'm going to say no. It shouldn't be allowed. I don't want my kids to get fucking secondhand smoke in them just because some asshole wants to smoke inside. We're going to be those assholes smoking inside. No, Is we're going to be living or in anything. Oh, I was thinking weed, but oh, okay. no cigarettes in yeah, the house. I, mean, you shouldn't, I don't think ever. you should smoke crack inside that well, often. Speak oh, yeah. for yourself. <laughs> Why not inside? It seems like more of an outside activity. I feel like crack is an inside activity. Really? You have to like use a spoon. I go hand in hand with like homeless and crack. So it just feels like it should be like an outside person activity. Yeah. Well, you never know. Your banker could be on crack as we speak. That's true. That's true. More so meth. Is that Ooh. big in Indiana? I just like, I watched a documentary one time <laughs> about this woman that like was a banker and she was doing like big things, but she was also on meth. So if you like don't do too much meth, it kind of just makes you a really good employee. I mean, ADHD meds are basically meth. Exactly. I think I've accidentally done meth. I think I did too. Here. Yeah, I thought it was Molly. Yeah. Yeah, and then it was not. Mm-hmm. It was actually, I did bath salts. Was that bath was for salts? sure confirmed. <laughs> and it was in college. I thought I did Molly and it wasn't working because you have to take more of the bath salts for it to affect you. And so I only did like a little bit and I was like, I feel nothing. This is shit Molly. And then the guy comes back and he's like, bad news. And I never did anything before I was straight edge until college. So I was like just doing Molly during like spring fest week. Yeah. And uh, he's like, yeah, that was bath salts. What? Did you feel amazing? No, I didn't feel anything, but the other people who did a lot, like the kids who are used to taking drugs and mushroom, yeah. like acid and mushrooms and stuff like that, and Molly all the time, they took a lot, and the people said they were acting real messed up. Yeah. I mean, scary. I can see that. I don't sure. know what I took one time here, but I stayed awake for like 48 hours and just told my friends the same story like 92 times in a row. What, was it bright pink? <laughs> what? Was it bright pink? No, it was like in a pill. And like, I like, I was pretty straight edge at the time. So they were like, just take this capsule. It's Molly. It's great. You'll feel amazing. So I took the whole capsule. I have no idea what it was, how much it was, but I was just like, remember that time we went to the lake? <laughs> like, and then I just start over like, remember that time we went to the lake? Like over and over and over again until I like fucking Pass. probably just... Yeah, I don't can, even know if I passed out. Can you eat cocaine? Eat it? Yeah, I don't you, think you, you can should. gum it. Uh, yeah, okay. So, like, could I swallow? You don't want it. It tastes disgusting. Yeah, it tastes disgusting. It does not taste good. No, either is Molly. None yeah. of it tastes good. All of it tastes like regret. Yeah, <laughs> it's like telling you you shouldn't take this. Yeah, like yeah. the pill, like whatever it is. It's like, hey, I'm pretty bad for you, and we're still just like. Hey, Rub it on my lips. I know. I was thinking of like that story that you just told. And I was like, damn, the amount of pills that were like for like ecstasy or Molly that I just took and trusted people. Yeah. No test kit, nothing yeah. in college or like post-college is kind lie. of crazy. Yeah. I trust people way too much. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of dicks like I've taken. We're talking about drugs, but let's not even talk about trusting people too much with their dicks. No, I yeah. trust men when they're like, I'm clean, I swear. Oh, and you know what? Yeah. Actually, all of them have turned out to be clean. So you know, I say not all for like me. it was a lot. Clap it up if you've had chlamydia. 
<laughs> okay, well, now that's over I think, with. Like God saving something really bad for me, you know. <laughs> like I haven't gotten any of like the basic ones because he's like, you're gonna get AIDS. You got like yeah. HIV. Yeah. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> no, you get one that they're like, this only happens in rats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, wait a second. Get this. This. <laughs> you're like the guy who fucked like a dead body. Yes. And got, yeah. Like some crazy Flesh shit. Eating disease. That's crazy. I couldn't do that shit. Fuck a dead body. Who could? Well, you know, I would hope not. I would have to go. kick you out of this house. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. Well, you're not dead, so you'd be safe. I'm dead inside. <laughs> it's close enough. All right. Hot takes. The chicken came first. I think egg came first. Okay, so chickens are related to reptiles, and reptiles can sometimes self-produce. So what if chickens, when they were first incepted, could self-produce, so the chicken came first, and then... What does self-produce mean? Like, they can have babies with themselves. Well, no, a chicken can lay an egg, but it has to be fertilized for a baby to come. It has to be fertilized by a rooster. Well, way to poke holes in my conspiracy, man. Well, I only know this because if you you don't have a rooster on the farm, then you can have, like, chickens. This is the Indiana coming out. You can have chickens that lay eggs that you can sell them. She's like, I'll tell you about the chickens. But if you got a rooster out there, he's just pounding on every day. I saw a rooster fucking the other day on the streets of Miami. Oh, yeah. I saw her her cloaca. It it gaped. Wait, her what? He was was, was throwing. poop out of yep. they just have one hole for everything that's a woman I right was, there i've never seen birds fuck we've talked about oh, this before this too. is my Chickens first time are really into anal i didn't know if you guys know that but whoa because it's all the same hole so okay oh it is the same hole it's yeah the, the cloaca hole. they shit and give birth out of the same hole yeah and fuck mm-hmm. oh do the, the eggs that's ever come the out are covered in dirty. dirty yeah yeah, that's why they're always eggs dirty. Eggs are disgusting when they first come out. I didn't know that either, and I like got some one time fresh from a farm, and I was just like touching them and stuff. I'm like, <laughs> this dirt is all over them. That's what I thought it was too. I was it's like, oh, it's dirt. dirt. It's not dirt. It's I'm not dirt. S- it's I'm so sorry. To it's report. shit. It's shit. The amount of oh, good great. to know. Good to know. <laughs> I won't lick any eggs. Okay, I would rather hot take. I would rather have a group of acquaintances than one close friend. False. No. I have one close friend. Yeah. I've always been that person. Just like one person. I can't. I can't keep up. Yeah, and then mm. if you tell them secrets, you know, like if it gets around to somebody, you're like, I only told you. So yeah, you have even birthdays, having a mm. bunch of pe- yeah, I can't do that. Hot take. It's fair. long distance relationships can work I think so I think so too I think so too with the right people yeah they have to be very communicative especially if you guys are both doing like your own thing and like it's in it's in like good reasons it's not like he's like yeah I gotta go uh, see my other wife or whatever (laughs) Uh, but if it's like long distance because you both have like two different styles of work or something yeah and you have to be out there as long as you're sending me videos of you masturbating and coming while you say my name Mm, yeah i'll I'll stay loyal i think it's easier if you have money because then you can like travel back and forth they don't work if you have money yeah it only works if you have money if you're poor it's just not gonna work that's so true that's so true so it never worked for me (laughs) i did it once when i was poor we communicated through letters it was beautiful letters you have a box of letter love letters that's so sweet were they in prison no, no military. <laughs> oh, it was a military same thing. Yeah. Even yeah. worse than prison. Yeah, way worse. I know. Well, you know Who's what? Who's more toxic? A guy in prison or a guy in the army? Oh. Oh, a guy in the army. For a sure. guy in the army. Which is it? Army. All of them. Army, yeah. Army's I'd, definitely very I'd toxic. rather have a prison man. I would rather a man in prison too. Yeah. Or recently out. Is there, I think maybe Navy. I think, I think a Navy man. Or Air safe. Force. Mm-hmm. Mm, nope. Dated one of those. They cheated on me. Yeah. They seem like they, they have too much access to air. 
<laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, like you can get in a plane and fly yeah. away from me. <laughs> Fuck no. No, you can't yeah, leave you can, me you like that. You can that. leave me too easily. If you're able to jump on a plane and leave my apartment, no. that's. What if he's on a submarine though? But the Air Force, they're typically too pretty risky. smart. Marines are really smart. Air Force. No, Air Marines Force. are dumb. Yeah. No, you think so? All I knew the a lot ones of, I've met. I knew a lot of smart Marines, or they're just very fit. Oh, uh, yeah. I yeah, love a man in like, uniform. And smart dumb. and dumb. Now I'm yeah. just, uh, you know what? Uh, I Maybe I should my call country. him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely should. Any military men want to come? <laughs> <sighs> well, that, was a fun stony. <laughs> that was a fun stony baloney that was fun that was good Holy that shit. was it that was a rough time rough and rumble i know are you promoting anything do you have any last words you want to say to the crowd sarah pop tarts on instagram tiktok uh and then uh I'm promoting it, but I think the shows are sold out. So <laughs> I'm really just saying it to brag. Uh, <laughs> Do it. Good, Good for you. Friends. I love that. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. Thank you, guys. This was fun. Thank Hell you for yeah. coming Thanks on. Thanks for coming on. And uh, I'm high right now. I'm My brain is enough. doing that thing. Where it doesn't do anything. I wish I was with you guys on this now. I wish you were high with us too, but we gave you a gift, so yeah, let us know how you to, like I it. I to do it at home. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it'll be a good gonna one. I was going to call you guys later and be like, I thought of some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Here's now. what you need to do with the podcast. <laughs> Sorry, I was a little nervous to do it in front of you guys, but... <laughs> oh, I love no, that. that's so funny. I love it. Guys, we're going to update you on how our Miami Improv show went probably in the next couple of weeks. It was a killer show, and thank you to all of our fans who showed up. It meant the fucking world. Yeah, we met a lot of podcast fans and it was that was a cool moment that we never had that. So we'll get into it next week. But uh, until then, check out all our clips on social media and um, we love you. Get high. We hope you're high right now. I hope you're sucking dick right now. <laughs> uh, I think that's what's wrong with me. I think I'm horny. Yeah, same. Uh, you pot. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's like, it's weird. I'm like, shut up. You don't know me. <laughs> and then it's like the thing. Every time I smoke weed, I'm like... I wouldn't mind making love. Like, not even, like, having sex. Like, I want to have, like, intimate, Because you like, can feel it. Yeah. Oh, that's the best kind of sex. <laughs> I can't believe I said making love on a microphone. I'm yeah. Like, I'm I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> I I miss someone who doesn't even exist yeah. to me. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. The made-up person I've put into my mind. I'm oh, I have, so like, much. eight of them. <laughs> I'll, I think about them when I come, to. It's great. All right. We love you. Bye, Bye guys. guys.